Hello everyone. This is Govati Nikila. I am a dysphagia and speech specialist works works at Medanta. So here as we all know that June is the dysphagia and speech awareness month. Medanta is coming up with a departmental of dysphagia and speech clinic and lab launch. So here we help all the patients and students to educate with the dysphagia and speech and patients who are facing with dysphagia and speech related issues can approach Medanta. So we also coming with a page blog where we release all the dysphagia related issues and speech related issues to create an awareness among public. Dysphagia is difficulty in swallowing that is inability to eat food or drink water or take the medicine. This is called dysphagia. There are certain signs like whenever we are eating food getting stuck in throat or inability to chew or drooling chest bun frequent vomiting or coughing or choking respiratory distress while eating if you find any of the signs while eating that does are the trigger or red flags of dysphagia most of the time elder population will get affected more, mostly with dysphagia otherwise according to research 11% of normal population will also have dysphagia So if anyone notice any of the signs then that you have to immediately approach the dysphagia specialist. You have to consult a dysphagia specialist who is certified in handling the swallowing difficulties or a speech medical speech language pathologist who deals with the swallow related issues. Uh if you ignore dysphagia it may lead to dehydration, malnutrition, or uh, aspiration pneumonia sometimes death uh the dysphagia specialist initially assess the dysphagia symptoms identify the dysphagia and have a proper assessment and then based on that the dysphagia specialist will plan a dysphagia rehabilitation and make you overcome the dysphagia there are some uh, few uh, tips where generally they can a caretaker can follow whenever they are feeding the patient a proper 90 degree sitting position while feeding need to be maintained a chin tuck position while feeding need to be maintained do not give a full spoon of bolus to the patient try to give a voluntary pauses in between whenever you feed the patient uh, whenever you try to give the liquid with a small quantity or try to avoid straw feeding glass feedings Try to give us small sips of water and uh, check for all the respiratory signs whenever you are feeding the patients. If you find any of the signs, immediately stop feeding the patient and do consult the dysphagia specialist. So, as we are working in acute case setup, here we have a clinical bedside swallow evaluation, and if in case we suspect. any silent aspiration or delayed aspiration we go for a objective evaluation immediately the objective evaluations here at medanta we include we do a fibroptic endoscopy and video fluoroscopy studies varium studies and manometry studies and management is based on the severity of dysphagia like here at our setup we start from the icu bedside we do all pass- passive perioral exercises electrical stimulation sensory vibratory stimulation and active exercises sometimes if we need any medication or a botox injection we do we do we also deal with that the lab here at medanta uh, is organized with a complete uh, dysphagia setup here we do a clinical bedside as i told you we do a clinical bedside evaluation that is of two different ways where we do a dye test for the tracheostomized patient that is tt patients who have a tracheostomized tube in their neck or a clinical auscultation try where it it is done in the patient with a non tracheostomized and we do a objective swallow test the lab also consisting of the objective um, instruments that is fibroptic endoscopy uh, and uh, we do a video fluoroscopy studies and we do a barium studies and we do a manometric studies so here if in after all the studies we have a electrical stimulation therapy that is called vst and we have sensory vibratory stimulation and sensory stimulus stimulation uh in and all this therapeutic management is different from patient to patient and it depends on the severity and the uh, uh, range like you know disease of the patient 
and then uh, the lab is also available like you know we have all the facilities for the healthcare workers and for the students or the any any of one whoever wants to learn and know more about the dyspraxia we have a lab services where we show all the recordings and train the students in terms of dyspraxia and also certify them and it is also for education and public awareness programs are also were also conducted through this platform thank you